If you have a linear transformation, it means that if you have a function that maps the first vector space to the second vector space, remember that it satisfies these two conditions. It preserves addition and it preserves the scalar multiplication. We can define the kernel of a linear transformation. For a linear transformation like T, the set of all vectors in V such that Tv is equal to zero is called the kernel of T and is denoted by kernel of T. So kernel of T is a subset of V. Later on, we're going to see that it is a subspace as well. So kernel of T takes vectors from V such that Tv is equal to zero. The kernel of the zero transformation consists of all vectors V. Why is that? Because the zero transformation takes everything and map them to zero vector. That's the definition of zero transformation. The zero transformation by definition is TV. The output is always zero. So since the output is always zero, no matter which vector you take from V, the output is fixed and the output is zero. So the kernel of the zero transformation equals to every single vector from the domain. The kernel of the identity transformation consists of one element, which is the zero vector itself. So this transformation takes any vector and map it to itself. So if you want to find all vectors that are mapped to zero, you only get one single value, which is the zero vector. Again, remember that for identity transformation, it takes the vector, it takes the object, and then it gives you the same object back. T of V is equal to V. It's very similar to identity function. So the kernel of identity function or the identity transformation is a single element, zero. Can make it more interesting. Consider the linear transformation that maps three by two matrices to two by three matrices. Remember the way that we define this linear transformation. T of A is equal to the transpose of A. Suppose I ask you to find the kernel of T. Well, to find the kernel of T, we are looking for all vectors in the domain such that T of that vector is equal to zero vector from the codomain. So you're basically finding a matrix that is mapped to zero matrix. Well, the only matrix is going to be zero matrix that satisfies this condition. So the kernel for this linear transformation is zero matrix. You don't have any other choice. In this question, I ask you to find the kernel of the projection T that maps the space to space itself. This projection takes x, y, and z, and it maps it to x, y, and zero. So as you can see, 
the third component just vanishes. It becomes zero. Remember the definition of kernel. The kernel of T is the set of all values, vectors in the domain such that T V becomes zero. So let us begin. Kernel of T is vectors of form zero, zero and Z. Z is not important, why is that? Because if I just plug in X, Y and Z, X comma Y comma Z, and I set it equal to zero, 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 which is the zero vector in the space. By definition, T of X, Y, and Z is nothing but X, Y, and zero. So this function takes a vector and it gives us X, Y, and zero. So if I set this equal to zero, 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 X and Y must be equal to zero, but Z is already zero. It doesn't matter whatever that Z is. It mapped to zero as well. So the kernel of T is all vectors in the form of zero, zero and Z, such that Z is a real number. So you basically, the kernel of T is Z axis. So if someone asks you to describe the kernel of T, you're going to say that, hey, kernel of T is just C axis itself. Every entry, X and Y and Z axis are equal to zero, and then Z, it might be zero, non-zero, square root, a half, a third, any fraction. So the description or visualization of kernel of T is Z axis itself. <laughs> 